Well, I said in the, the previous video that we needed to wait till the Feast of Trumpets came and went to recalibrate. And that gave me a chance to review exactly what has transpired on this channel during the last month. And I am convinced that God has sent an incredible message to us through this channel. And in this video, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what I think he's telling us. And it's mind boggling that he would choose a channel this insignificant to announce something so important, but that's just the way he does things. And I, I also believe that it was the channel was formed because of certain events and we were led to this moment so that I would give you this video to consider. It will actually be a part two, sort of, uh, uh, but not, this is a self-contained video. We will look at what I believe God has shown us, what he is saying, and it is stupendous. I know that. This is out of my price range, generally speaking, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're going to discuss all that, but there's also another aspect that we'll deal with in a separate video. I'm also glad that I waited till after Feast of Trumpets because it, it gave the rodeo a chance to get out of town. The rodeo came to town, and I'm speaking metaphorically. Now, here in San Angelo, Texas, we have a literal rodeo that comes once a year, and it takes over the town. Fills up every room in the hotel business here in San Angelo. Uh, they fill up the restaurants and bars and tourist spots. You name it. For three weeks, they pretty much take over the town. But they're not going to stay. They're not going to stay. They're going to leave. They're going to drop some dough. They're going to be loud and boisterous. And there's some good people. Believe me, there are some great people who travel to, to watch the rodeo. But there's a lot of, you know, riffraff too. So, But they're going to leave. They don't care about this town like the residents do. And that's what happened to this channel. When I put this video up called Crazy, it attracted 66,000 views so far. That's about 30 times more people viewing one of my videos than normal. And most people who run a YouTube channel would be thrilled. I'm not. I'm not. I like my core group because of their character. A lot of the people who come with that 66,000, when I read their comments, they seem more secular than Christian. They're loud, demanding, rude, insulting, and they get frustrated when this channel doesn't do things the way they want. They are riffraffed. I'm sorry, they are. And they're not going to be here long. So I'm hoping that they leave because this video is for the core audience who has been part of this channel for a while, who gets it, understands where we were, how, where we've come from, where we're pointing to. They understand me a little bit. And uh, when they disagree, they do so respectfully. So if you're part of the rodeo crowd and you're still here, I, you know, I can't ask you to leave. That would be rude on my part. But... You're a guest, okay? You're a guest. So, anyway. All right. So let's begin this way. Oh, and Maggie. Don't get me started on Maggie. Maggie, who came with the rodeo. Maggie goes, well, I stopped listening to him when he said he didn't know that person's pronouns. And she, she left but not before she wagged her self-righteous finger in my face and threw a bunch of Bible verses at me indicating that I was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Because somehow Maggie has lived her entire life without coming in contact with sarcasm. If I gave Maggie a million dollars to find somebody who hates the pronoun culture more than I do, she wouldn't get the million dollars because that person doesn't exist. But she was loud boisterous, thought she'd bring down some fire from heaven and accuse me of being a wolf in sheep's clothing. Thank you, rodeo. Now please leave. So let's begin this way. The difference between what has happened on this channel over the last month and let's say a typical rapture dream. And I'm not putting down typical rapture dreams by any means. I'd love to have one. 
Whether that was from God or not, it's a great dream. Let me give you what a typical rapture dream that I've read in countless comment sections over various channels. Someone will come on and say, I think I had a rapture dream the other night. In the dream, I was rushing to the airport. And when I got there, I heard this commanding voice over the PA say, Flight 777 is ready for immediate departure. You must have a gold one-way ticket to board. And they look down and they're holding a gold one-way ticket for Flight 777. And it says departure date 10 10 14. And then somebody from the airline, you know, dressed in their that little suit they wear, runs up to him and says, You've got to hurry. You have a ticket for flight 777. You've got to hurry because the weather has turned bad. And you look out the window and stuff is falling, hail and rocks and stuff. You've got to hurry. No luggage. Get on that plane now. And they take off running. And then the dream ends. It's a great dream. Who wouldn't want to have it one night, huh? But the problem with that dream is those of us who didn't have it, we're not sure if that was from God. We're not sure if we can see the fingerprints of God in that dream. person who has it probably does, and they're all in on it. The rest of us go, well, you know, I'll keep, uh, let's see, you said 1014, October 14th. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I hope you're right. You know, I'm pulling for you, but we're not really moved to do much more than that. What has transpired here over the last 30 days is totally different, and I want you to see it. And I'm going to have to be a little redundant to go through it, but it's important before we get to what he's showing us. You need to go over this again and make sure you understand what has happened, okay? It began with a dream from Lori about the Titans and the Giants. I saw that. I was drawn to it. I asked God for confirmation. Did you send that dream? Because this is an unusual dream, and I think I got it. So I made that video. But what I want you to really see is, right off the bat, we are seeing something from the flood story, the Nephilim. Her dream was about the Nephilim, right out of the flood story. It is the reason the flood came. They show up in Genesis 6. We know the verse. So in talking about Lori's dream, I said there looks to be a countdown aspect to her dreams. And maybe we should count, because she thought it was tied to 9-11. So I made a little countdown possibility. But then, and I'll have to call him anonymous guy because I can't find his comment, I read a comment following that video in which he had a different countdown, and his countdown led to 11-11, okay? And I thought that was very interesting because November 11th, in a way, is also 9-11. You could say it's the 11th day of the month named 9. It's 9-11, and it's 11-11. But more importantly, for the purposes of this video, I want you to see that date is embedded in the flood story. In the account of the flood, an important event, a notable event, took place on 11-11 when Noah releases the raven. The rain has stopped for a while. He releases a raven to see if it can find dry ground or if it'll come back. It came back. That happened on 11-11. Now, when you read the account of it, it's hard to see. Fortunately, I went to uh, AnswersInGenesis.com. The great people over there have broken down the flood story by, you know, uh, event after event after event with the date. And they show that the raven went out on 11-11. Now, if you just read the account, here's what you'll see. And the waters decrease continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Then he sent out a raven. So you have to do a little addition. Sees the mountains on the first day of the 10th month. 40 days later, okay, 30 days later would take us from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the 11th month. That's 30 days, but he waited 40. Add 10 more days to the first month, 
to the first day of the 11th month, and you get 1111. So here come two people with input, whether they know it or not, pointing to the flood account. At that point, I mentioned that, well, I had an interesting dream. I'm not saying my dream was from God. I'm just saying it was an interesting dream, and it showed me that maybe my interpretation initially about Lori's dream could have been wrong. The dream may not have been specifically about the Nephilim, but pointing us to a different situation because in the dream that I had, my mother shows up. Now, the night before, I went, right before I went to bed, I asked God for a dream. I said, it doesn't have to be prophetic. I just want it about you, about heavenly things, about the kingdom, anything you want to send. I want it about you. And I got this dream. My mother shows up and she's quoting a Bible verse. That didn't happen in real life, let alone, now I'm not saying she wasn't a believer, but I, I don't think I ever heard her quote a Bible verse let alone in a dream, okay? In this dream, she's adamant, and she's talking about Genesis 6, 12, over and over and over, and it's a famous flood verse. It's really the instigator of the flood. Here it is. God sees the earth, and it's completely corrupt. And again, it's pointing to the flood account. Both dreams are pointing to the flood account. Anonymous guy, whether he knew it or not, is pointing to the flood account. It's all about the flood from three different people. Then KLB shows up in the comment section. She has heard us talk about the 1111 possibility. And she says, are you aware that the day the flood started... On Heshvan 17, the 17th day of the second month, this year falls on 1111. Again, she's pointing to something from the flood account that she said later she felt urged in her spirit to tell me. Oh, it's good that she told me. Now, when I read it the, that night, the first time that I saw it, I said, wow, that's kind of interesting. The day the flood started, 17th of the second month, Heshvan 17, this year falls on 11-11. That's very interesting. Now, if there were angels watching this whole thing kind of transpire, they just looked at each other, looked at me, and shook their head in disbelief. He doesn't get it. He still doesn't get it. And one of the angels would have said, this isn't like working with Isaac Newton, is it? No, it is not. No, it is not. So the next morning I wake up and I think about what KLB said. And I wanted to check and see if she did the calculation correctly. And she did. It does fall on 11-11 this year. And then I wanted to see the verse. <clears throat> and so I tracked the verse down. I didn't know exactly where it was. And it would be in chapter 6, 7, or 8 somewhere. And I saw the verse. And here it is. The flood begins that day. And then I saw that it was Genesis 7-11. We're right back at the flood, of course. And then the rest of my dream that I had with my mother hit me like a freight train because the part that I left out in the previous video was the part I didn't understand. What she said was, set the clock for 7-11 because it will remind us of Genesis 6, 12, over and over in this dream. She said it to the point at once I said, at one point I said, okay, mother will set the clock for 7-11. We got it. We got it. As it turns out, those are companion verses. God sees the earth in Genesis 6, 12 is corrupt. He responds with Genesis 7, 11. And Genesis 7, 11 contains a date to which we can actually set our clock. We can set our clock to the 17th day of the second month, which we now know is 11-11 this year. Once again, the two things that keep showing up as this thing progresses, flood stuff and 11-11. So I announced that I had my this part of the dream. I revealed this part of the dream. And I'm kind of now beginning to go, 
I think that may have been more than just an interesting dream that he sent me. This is followed up by Kathy, who comes along and says, okay, so the flood lasted one year and 10 days. It began on Heshvan 17. It ends the next year on Heshvan 27. Guess what day that is next year? Well, I looked it up, and of course, it's 11-11. Once again, Kathy brought us information about the flood that's tied to 11-11. I would wager a guess that nobody on the planet knew that the anniversary of the flood would begin this year on 11-11 and end next year on the anniversary of the end of the flood on 11-11. Who would know that? But this is revealed to us just a month or so before it's about to happen. That this amazing thing, the beginning and end of the flood, one year apart, both hit on 11-11. I did calculations. I went back in time to see that hasn't happened for 114 years, where the flood begins on 11-11 one year, and the very next year, the anniversary of the end of the flood also hits on 11-11. It happened in 1908 and 1909, and we talked about that. I looked in the future this past week. It doesn't happen again this century. I don't know when it happens again. I went as far ahead as the year 2100. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event. You'll never live to see another time, whether you want to or not, that the flood anniversary begins on 11-11, ends next year, begins on 17th of Heshvan, 11-11, ends on the 27th of Heshvan the following year, but it's also 11-11, one time in your life ever. That's going to happen, and it starts in about four or five weeks. I don't think that's a coincidence that he is bringing that through a channel named the 1111 sign. That is not a coincidence. What? Okay, I'm editing this part of the video. I actually had finished that video yesterday, which would be Wednesday, September 28th. And I edited it out, and I exported it, and I was just about to click the button to upload it to YouTube, and I couldn't push the button. Because this is so important, I wanted to make sure I got it right. And I asked him, do I have the authority to say the things I just said to you wonderful people? I wanted to make sure. And I said, I, I'm going to wait. I called my sister and I said, pray about this. I, I need direction on this. And this morning uh, at 2 a.m., I woke up. I started thinking about it. I didn't hear anything. I was hoping I would. Uh, didn't see anything. But the thought hit me, I think I need to bring it down a notch. And suddenly, I felt that's the answer. That's, okay, now I can go forward. I think I was hitting the rock too many times, so to speak. I needed to bring it down a bit. Now, what I'm going to tell you is exactly what I said yesterday, but I, I think this is in a, a way that is more pleasing to him. This is not a FedEx package. This is something from God, and it needs to be handled carefully. Now, let me address the question. Well, why do I have the authority to tell you what this progression means? And that's a great question. Um, I think the answer to that is he already gave me a dress rehearsal for this, and I didn't even realize it until yesterday. In 2018, when I started seeing uh, the 1111 sign on, on clocks, I couldn't believe it. I'd, nothing like that had ever happened to me. I didn't even know there was such a thing as the 1111 sign. Anyway, after the four months, I said, if I, people are saying judgment is coming. That's what it means. I think it means something else as well. If you show me one of the other meanings for 1111, I'll start a, a YouTube channel, and I'll make a video about it, and, and I'll tell everyone. Well, a year later, he led me to understand that 11.11 was warning us one of the 
one of the meanings for 1111 was to warn us of 2020. So on November the 22nd, that just happened to be on that day, I made the video, and this was about a month, 2019, November 22nd, 2019, I made the video, and I told everyone that I don't know what's going to happen in 2020, but it's going to be a year for the ages. Now, this was a month before we even began to hear about this virus in China. I had no idea what was going to happen. I just knew he's showing us that 2020 is going to be an incredible year, and it was. It was a horrible year, a year of deception and lies and masks and social distancing and nobody going to church on Resurrection Sunday and on and on and on. Awful year. It was a turning point year. The same thing, I believe, is happening now. He is using 1111 to point out a year. He is saying the year that begins on November 11, 2022, and ends on November 11, 2023, the start and end dates of the flood is going to be another incredible year. Why is it going to be incredible? This is what I think I'm supposed to tell you. The silence in heaven ends. The flood begins. The flood version in the book of Revelation, of course, is the hour of testing that's coming on the whole world, what we call the tribulation. That's what he wants me to tell you. Now, you can scoff at it. You can mock it. You can do whatever you want with it. But that's what he is saying. Now, there's another thing that I need to tell you. I've told you before, but it needs to be said here. And it's to the Church of Philadelphia. Listen carefully what he says. Because you have kept my command to persevere. That's not a great word in translating what the Greek is saying. We just probably don't have the English word that really, truly matches it. If you go to the Greek interlinear and see it on a real raw form, here's what that word says under remaining. That's why every Greek lexicon includes in the definition of that Greek word, remain behind. That is what the church has been placed into, the state of remaining behind. He is saying, I gave a command about how you are to remain behind, and you kept it. That command was watch. They were watchful because you have kept my command of watching while you remain behind, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. There's a way of escaping. If you don't want that escape, if the idea of a pre-trib removal nauseates you, Here's an idea. Go to him today and just flat out tell him you opt out. But he is holding open the door to the Church of Philadelphia for those who meet the requirements. November 11th, 2022 to November 11th, 2023. Those dates for the first time in our life, for the only time in our life, hit upon the start date of the flood, and the end date of the flood. That is not a coincidence. When this whole thing started, the progression started, we had no idea where it was leading. So the one time in our life that we're going to have, and he made it clear in Genesis, the start date, Heshvan 17, end date, one year later, Heshvan 27, would begin and end on 1111. And he's sending that information through a channel that's called 1111. That's not a coincidence. What is going to happen when the silence in heaven comes to a halt? There's silence for about half an hour, and then there is this. This is the opening announcement, and it's a big one. Then the angel took the censer, 
filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And then what happens right after that? So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. There's not a more ominous verse in the Bible. The silence in heaven is about to come to a halt. In the dream that I had, I was told to set the clock to 7 That's Genesis 7 11, the day the flood started. Heshvan 17. That's the date on our calendar. That's not a coincidence either. The 22 is also 11 plus 11. It is not a coincidence. None of this is a coincidence. Why is he telling this to us? He's not showing us the day or the hour, but he just gave us the year. Why is he doing that? Because I think we have some work to do. Not horrible work, not out of your comfort zone, no money being spent, but I think he's given us one last task, and we'll take that up in the next video. But as for me, from this point forward, here's what I want spiritually tattooed on my forehead. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming.